FBI team investigates cashing in on cans. Clink is the largest redemption operation in the state, and it brands itself as clean and convenient. But is it accurate? I team reporter Marissa Bader goes behind the scenes to get answers. If you're anything like me, you probably drop a bag of bottles at a clink kiosk and never look back. But one Westbrook man suggests we all should be. He came to one of our Tell the I Team events with a simple question. Are you getting the right amount of cash for your cans? The clink concept is easy enough. Fill a bag with redeemable containers, add a sticker with your personalized barcode, and drop it off at a kiosk. Then wait for those nickels to show up in your account. It's like a bottle savings account. Louis Philippe was a customer for 10 years, but in 2017 he says he wondered if the dollar figure matched what he was putting in. And I started doing my own audits. Philippe says Clink was wrong four out of five times, shorting him a total of 45 cents. People like, oh my soul, so what? I'll give you 45 cents, shut up, go away. Um, and I thought, now wait a minute, that's just me. And I'm thinking, and that's just two months. If every customer was shorted that change, he estimates it would add up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're not accurate. That's all. They're just not accurate. The I team decided to test that theory. Two. With containers I'd been collecting for months, we counted not once, but twice. We expected it to add up to 885, making my new balance 1660. Instead, it was $15.45, $1.15 short. The I-Team went to Clink to get answers and a look inside its South Portland facility that processes about a half a million containers a day. And it goes around this CEO Allison Vanderhoof says bag tags are scanned first, so the containers are associated with the right account. That's followed by the barcode on each container. She says the company couldn't skim or steal even if it wanted to. The way that the clink system works, we report every individual barcode to the manufacturer and that's to give them comfort that we're not perpetrating fraud. Why might somebody see a different number of bottles or dollars? Yep, yep, it can happen. A lot can happen in the process, she says. If a bag rips, containers may fall out. And if a bottle or can is crushed, the barcode can't be read. These are really common. That is a water bottle. Uh, there is no way a scanner will pick that up. Back to my clink bags. Vanderhoof says some of the barcodes were unknown. We don't know who to bill to get your nickel back. So, so that discrepancy uh, puts that container in a hole. She says the state database isn't always up to date, so you might not see the money right away. There's a limited edition Super Bowl Pepsi um, that it hasn't been registered yet, but we see it 8,000 times the week after Super Bowl right. you know, happens. And so we know, so that jumps to the top of our research list. We research it, we find what it was, mm -hmm. and then everybody who had one of those containers gets a credit. I should get a credit too when my unknown barcodes are identified. Philippe says he heard some of these explanations over the years, right, but yeah. doesn't buy them. He closed his account and now takes his cans elsewhere. It's just a matter of trust with Clint, and there's too many opportunities to not trust them. They lost me. Keep in mind, if you buy a container from a state that doesn't have a bottle bill like New Hampshire, you can't redeem it because you never paid a deposit. And we did get some interesting insight about what consumers can do to make sure their containers are counted. The biggest one is don't overfill your bag. If it's too heavy, it will break. Also, make sure to tie it and scan the tag on every bag when you drop them off. That way, if one gets lost or stolen, there's a record of it.